Hello coaches, this is Brian Hart and in this video we're going to take a little bit of time to explore the International Coaching Federation's training paths, credentialing paths. This is a common conversation that we have for coaches that are interested in stepping into the field or are, have already stepped in and don't quite know which path is going to be best for them to take as they continue to build their professional brand and continue to pursue their credentials. And at this time, it is a bit of a transitionary period where things are particularly complicated. We are looking at the transition from the old ACSTH, portfolio, and ACTP paths. Um, we had a lot of these acronyms, ACTP, ACSTH. And it is great that the ICF has transitioned to a new frame that's looking at these level one, level two, and level three programs. But this transition period has created quite a bit of confusion as coaches are navigating the different training websites, they see a little bit of mixed messaging or confusion because of the different terms. And so this video, you know, it's here to help uh, create some clarity around where things are. But let's start by just talking about the different levels of credentialing. You have the Associate Certified Coach Credential, the Professional Certified Coach Credential, and the Master Certified Coach Credential. These are the three credentials in the field. Uh, credential being a mix of training and evaluation, feedback, and uh, experience in the field. When I've helped with hiring of coaches or onboarding of coaches in the past, um, selection of coaches, the credential makes the decision-making process so much easier because when we see a person, and any company sees a, a person having a PCC, for instance, we know that no matter what their training background, no matter what path they might have taken to get the PCC, we know they have sufficient amount of training in the field, they've been provided feedback from a qualified coach, they have been evaluated through a performance evaluation with those recordings that have to be assessed at a specific performance level. They have experience coaching people of a good amount um, of time, and they can take the big experience-based or wisdom-based coach knowledge assessment. It's a it's a doozy, especially with the new format. Um, but yeah, the, the PCC as a credential communicates training, experience, and assessment, and helps organizations and people who are a little bit more in the know um, about the coaching field make decisions more quickly around what coach might be a good fit for them, what coach might be of the right professional level for their needs. Now, how do you earn these credentials? Well, the standard path now is to join a certificate program, but there's a few different kinds of these. And we'll also take a quick look at the, uh, the other formats, ACSTH and Portfolio. But for now, let's talk about the new, simpler form um, that coaches can follow or the path that coaches can follow to earn their credentials. We can start by talking about level one programs, and these provide 60 hours of coach training, 10 hours of mentor coaching at the ACC level or above. It has to be with a, uh, a coach who holds an ACC for over three years as a renewed coach for an ACC um, or a PCC or, or an MCC providing that mentor coaching. The coach has to pass a recording evaluation up to the ACC level or at the ACC level. And of course, they would go on to do the amount of hours in the field, take the coach knowledge assessment. One little caveat, though, for ACCs, associate certified coaches who hold this credential and continue holding it for more than three years, when they go to renew at that three-year mark, part of the continuing education requirements is they must do 10 hours of mentor coaching. And while it is highly recommended that coaches implement mentor coaching into their continued education one way or the other, having it as a requirement means that it can it maybe add a little bit of extra cost for coaches pursuing just the ACC. And when we look at that aspect and how level one and level two programs work, we can get a sense that the ICF's encouragement is for coaches to pursue level two programs as the standard. Now, the, the these used to be called ACTP, um, a, a, accredited coach training programs. Now they are level two, but the Old ACTP programs, they were the standard in the field, the full program that provided all of the training, mentor coaching, and evaluation for both ACC and PCC coaches. And coaches who go through a level two program or have gone through an ACTP, they 
can jump straight over to the PCC if they have enough hours in the field. By the end of a level two program, a coach has to have had 125 training hours, 10 hours of mentor coaching at the PCC level. So this would be cumulative. This wouldn't be included. Uh, it's just, it would cover both ACC and PCC, 10 hours of mentor coaching at the PCC level or above, performance evaluations at the PCC level. And then the coach has to do the hours, experience in the field and take that big coach knowledge assessment when they apply. Now, what makes this slightly confusing is, as you see, I just deleted or removed the level one program. The reason for that is a level one program starts at the same point of a level two program. And I like to compare it to a bachelor's degree and an associate's degree. Most people pursue a bachelor's degree while knowing that if they were to pause at the middle point, they would be able to earn the associate's degree. Now in coaching, coaches tend to go through level two programs knowing that if they were to pause halfway through a program or somewhere in that point, they could wrap up their, their mentor coaching and just cut things out uh, with a level one program and just pursue the ACC. Most level two trainings have what's called level one add-on and we're able to provide a level one certificate if needed. Uh, but in most cases, level two programs are pointing to the more robust complete program uh, as a way to prepare for the future. As a coach earns the ACC, they go three years and they'll have everything in place so they can also go, go on to earn the PCC as long as they've had enough experience in the field by that time. A couple of other little caveats with this. I personally encourage coaches to pursue level two programs because it can cost a little bit more to do a level one program and then say two years later, try to finish the second half of the level two with the company. And the reason it can cost a bit more is the coach training will likely require the coach to do another round of 10 hours of mentor coaching. So again, that is the more premium service in the coach training field. Um, uh, just starting from the same beginning point as level one, if you start a level two, you start at the foundation, you build all the way up from ACC to PCC performance standards, and you have the 10 hours of mentor coaching that covers the PCC level. And because of that, it's kind of a complete package where you don't have to worry about that, that doubling up of, uh, of mentor coaching. Now, there's a lot of caveats to all of this because every coach training will have their own policies and own, own practices. Some may require a coach to complete a level one before the level two. Um, but these are kind of the standard ways to understand the field. A level two program, it gets the job done for both ACCs and PCCs. It's the, the standard way to do your coaching education at this point from the, the ground up. Then we move to level three programs. These are, well, it's kind of like the master's degree if we're comparing it to bachelor's and associates. You can't pursue the MCC or level three programs until you are holding a PCC. And so these are for coaches that are pretty well established or they are well established in the field. They have the PCC and it completes their training hours so that whatever they had before, they will have a total of at least 200 hours of coach training by the time they're done with the level three programs. So level three programs, they have to at least be 75 hours of coach training. They'll have 10 hours of mentor coaching. However, the performance evaluations with level three programs are not handled in house. Coaches that go through level two or level one, the performance evaluation where we're reviewing the recording of the coach and uh, signing off that the coach can perform at the ACC or with level twos, the PCC level of performance, if coaches are not a part of these leveled programs and, and the other paths that we'll look at later, they have to submit those recordings to the ICF. With the level three program, that's the case either way. If you go through level three program or portfolio path, you still have to submit your recordings, your performance evaluations to the ICF. And there's a good reason for this. The ICF wants to verify with multiple assessors that the coach is able to perform at the MCC level. It's a, it's a guarded credential because it signs off on the performance of this coach and their ability to lead effectively in the field, to provide mentor coaching at all levels 
uh, to any coach. And so it's important for coaches to who go through level three program or portfolio path as they pursue the MCC to be very well prepared to submit two recordings to the ICF that are just nearly perfect, really well done, capturing uh, some some great coaching um, where they're they're taking their time with the client and performing at that MCC level with artful coaching. Let's dig over here, though. Oh, I guess I'll say one more thing. As you pursue any level, you'll notice that coach knowledge assessment is there for each of them. Um, now, I'll talk a little bit about this transition period in more detail now that we've got level one, level two, and level three. While the previous part of the video might have been a little bit complex, it's a little bit more complex when we think about where things were and where things are going now. There's quite a few coaches that have gone in the past through an ACSTH or portfolio path. This means ACSTH is uh, approved coach specific training hours. So these are ICF accredited coach training hours, but not full programs. And then portfolio is, let's say you've done coach training, but with a non ICF accredited coach training or just an alternative path that's provided you insight into Rogerian or um, client driven coaching. And uh, you want to apply in that path, th these paths require the coach to submit the performance evaluation directly to the ICF at all levels. Now, for coaches who have gone through this path in the past, have maybe recently wrapped up an ACSTH course, now they're looking at these leveled programs, it can be a bit daunting or confusing because where do you step in? Do you have to restart the whole thing with a level one or level two program? What are your options? For now, um, we do encourage coaches to go ahead and start fresh with level two programs if they have no training experience. But for those who already have, let's say 60 hours of coach training, they may consider collaborating with an, a level one or two program and asking what their transfer policy might be. And uh, I'll talk about a little bit more about this in, in a moment. Also, if a coach has an ACC, credential already, and even if they went through the portfolio path, they may be able to transfer into a level two program based on that program's transfer policy. The short of it is, if you come from an alternative background, from one of these other backgrounds, you may now be able to step into these level one or level two programs. The best way to determine that is to reach out to the coach trainings. So let's go through some Q&A. Um, we've already talked a bit about this. Why start with a level two training pathway instead of starting with a level one, then a level two, then a level three? And we've already talked a bit about how that is similar to a bachelor's degree. It's the standard approach. It prepares coaches with a stronger overall foundation for practice towards PCC level performance standards as well. And, and I think this is really important. It makes me think of my choir teacher. And she used to say that uh, practice doesn't make perfect because if you're practicing the wrong stuff, you might just get better at being bad. Now, if a coach has just finished a level one, it's not that they're going to necessarily practice the bad, but they may not have had enough reps, uh, enough exercise at the PCC level to know the distinctions between ACC performance and PCC performance. So as they're continuing to practice their coaching between their level one experience and finishing up their training, their level two training, they will be practicing less in-depth coaching. They won't have as strong of, of a foundation. Whereas coaches that start with a level one from start to finish, they wrap up knowing that they can perform at PCC level, knowing that they're not always consistent maybe, but they know how to do that. They know how to reflect on their work after each session and say, hmm, that was a PCC coaching session. Hmm, that was, that was closer to maybe those minimum ACC standards or ooh, maybe that wasn't really even good ICF oriented coaching in that case. And I wonder what got in the way. Uh, this type of training overall coach training is, is not about knowledge. It's about experience. It's about practice with feedback. And so having that full start to your education uh, as a coach is is really good for building that solid foundation. So that's one of my encouragements uh, for coaches to as they consider the level two pathway. Also, we talked about it's often more cost effective because you don't have the doubling up of the mentor coaching. And then if pressed, 
you could say that a level two has a little bit stronger of a reputation in the general coaching field for those who understand the distinctions between the levels and the credentials. With I want to throw in a huge caveat though. If you're with the organization bringing on coaches, you're mainly looking for the credentials. So while a level two is stronger than a level one, an ACC credential is stronger than a level two because we know the ACC coach has gotten hours in the field coaching live people. So it's it's a little bit of a caveat or a little bit of a, a selling point, I guess, from the ICS perspective. But uh, I think it really does come down to that stronger foundation. Then how do you bridge into level one or level two if you have ACST training or maybe portfolio path? To clarify this a bit further from before, ACSTH coaches, um, and if you don't know what that acronym means, don't worry about it. But if you have received coach training from a, uh, an organization, you look at that certificate, you may see this acronym on it. If you see ACTP, by the way, um, if you see this, that means you are you have completed essentially a level two program. So you can disregard all the level one and level two stuff. But if you see this, that means that you are on a bit of a separate track. ACSTH coaches and portfolio ACCs can consider reaching out to accredited coach training programs to see what their transfer policy is. Now, every program has a transfer policy. Some may not, uh, some of their frontline employees may not know how to articulate it very well, uh, but if you ask them, they can look it up to be accredited with the ICF uh, at a level one or level two. Uh, I think also level three, but it's definitely for level one and level two. You have to have a transfer policy. Some programs don't accept transfer credits. That's completely fine. But if you ask them, hey, what is your transfer policy for ICF approved coach specific training or if it's level two, what's your transfer policy for maybe a portfolio path ACC coach? Uh, and they'll be able to tell you what they do. Uh, just as a clarification, my program takes a level one certificate in from another coach training into my level two. And if a person has an ACC, I can take them into my level two as well. There's a, a separate level one bridge transfer policy I'm trying to work on with the ICF's help uh, to help those who are in an in-between stage having uh, just the ACSTH hours and not the the level one certificate. So depending on the requirements and your training background, kind of speaking of this, the training program may need you to start from the beginning. In other cases, you may be able to transfer credits. Um, and the best thing to do is just to identify a training organization you'd like to work with and see what their options are. These, these transfer, this whole bridge into the new levels, if you've already gotten some of your training in and you're just wondering what to do, Almost always, it's going to be best to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with some people. I, I like to say in these videos or presentations, feel free to just connect with me on LinkedIn, for instance, ping me there, and I'd be happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one just to chat about your situation if you find yourself in this in-between state. Uh, and then what are the benefits of level three trainings for MCC candidates? This is a bit of a confusing point because when you look at the ICF's application process for MCCs, their portfolio path is equivalent to the level three path. The same amount of time required for review, the same, um, I think same cost. Yeah, same cost. The big difference is what the level three's intention is. When I went through my pursuit of the MCC coach, uh, coach credential, I cobbled together a lot of different coach trainings because there wasn't um, a satisfactory MCC program that was in my, my um, you know, it wasn't affordable for me. And it wasn't a big focus of trainings to just be focused on MCC um, credentials. However, now with the level threes, uh, they are specifically designed to help coaches, or they should be specifically designed to help coaches pursue the recording process, building consistency around performing at the MCC standards so that at the end of the program, if the coach doesn't know if this may be the final recordings they have by the end of the program might pass the MCC requirements with the ICF, they know how to build that. They know how to almost mentor themselves. Coaches who complete a level three program should pretty much be equipped to be their own MCC mentor coach. Not that that should be the only perspective they seek, but their own ability to understand their performance at higher levels. 
uh, should have been tuned through the work with the Level 3 program. Um, the value of the programs really are found in how well the coach training provides a space for f practice and actionable MCC level feedback. Um, I threw this in here with this presentation. I think it's very important. A level three program shouldn't be that focused on models. If you if you think about it, you shouldn't have coaching tool. This is my opinion. You shouldn't have coaching tools in a level three program because a level three program uh, is helping a coach rely almost 100%, practically 100% on the co on the client's language driving the conversation, utilizing agenda setting and action planning, but in a transformational way, in an artful way, in a high pressure or high impact way by using stronger versions of the client's language that they are using. So coaches at the MCC level are, are inputting a lot less into the session, but to do that, the coach has to really look internally, build habits that help them perform in a very hands-off way that helps the client get their job done. If you are just starting the field, don't worry about this part <laughs> until later. But for now, uh, ev everyone who is considering ICF coaching, you, you can think about the, the coaching experience, the training experience that you get. Is it helping you perform consistently towards ICF expectations in service of your everyday client? Are you able to serve someone who's very unfamiliar with coaching? Are you able to, uh, and that would be someone who might need a bit more tools and hands-on approach, are you able to serve someone who's kind of experienced with coaching and, and is getting more out of the experience? That would be more of a PCC approach. And are you interested in pursuing coaching to help a person who can really run the show for themselves. That's MCC coaching, and it is such a joy to be able to provide that coaching. All these different tra training programs provide a range of voice for the coach. The credentials say you have a range to your coaching voice. In our training programs, mine, any level one, level two, level three, we're, we're in the business of helping you control your voice for the sake of the client's work. And it's a joy to be in this uh, space of, of coach training. I love this work. Um, I My own program, we have a level two uh, with a level one add-on. I've got a level three. So my company can service uh, coaches that are starting from the beginning or wrapping up their experience towards MCC. And um, yeah, that's the overview, explaining the different levels and the, the different credentials. If this is clear as mud by the end of this presentation, feel free to uh, connect with me book some time. We can talk about it in, in detail. If you're interested in coach training, feel free to also reach out to me. We can discuss uh, upcoming launches, programs, and your vision uh, and your journey into the field. Uh, ultimately, thank you for coaching. Thank you for supporting people and their growth. Hope this is helpful.